Ladies and gentlemen, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. When there's beer on your mind, your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. And now, the Halls of Ivy. That surround us here today, and we will not forget, though we be far, far away. Welcome again to Ivy, Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. When a student manages to distinguish himself in any field, usually one of the first persons contacted for a statement is the president of his college. That's because under normal conditions, this learned head is supposed to know all about the activities and achievements of his thousands of charges, past and present. So, at the home of Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, who is the president of Ivy, and his wife Victoria, the former English actress, we find a reporter from the Ivy News, a Mr. Crane, whose first remark is, you're the logical one to give me the information I need for a Sunday feature, Doctor. The news item has already been in the daily. I imagine you saw it. Well, whatever the news item was, Mr. Crane, it's highly unlikely that I did see it. Lately, the, uh, uh, the press of work has kept me from the press, so to speak. But uh, this article was about one of your students, Leslie Huff. Uh, Leslie Huff? Oh, yes, yes, Huff. Uh, Huff? Yes. <laughs> Yes, what was your reaction to the news about his award? Well, I, uh, <laughs> it's, um, I, uh, I, well, it's quite possible that my wife can tell you even better than I how I, uh, uh, reacted. Victoria? Well, you were completely surprised, bowled over, flabbergasted, absolutely dumbfounded. Uh, I, I think that conveys my attitude quite adequately, dear, thank you. <laughs> struck all of a heap, you're welcome. Yes, <laughs> I certainly am, I mean, was, struck all of a... After all, it isn't every day that an Ivy student gets an award for the, from the National Art Foundation for his painting entitled Portrait of My Buddy, drawn from memory. Is it, dear? Oh, oh, yes, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Good heavens, no, of course it isn't. No. I, uh, Thank uh, you, Vicky. thank you. I guess the painting is giving the critics a field day. They're pretty divided in their opinion of it, but you know how critics are. I think they draw lots to see who sneers and who cheers. <laughs> well, critics are an odd breed, Mr. Crane. They seem to thrive on a reverse plan for existence. United they fall, divided they stand. <laughs> I've often heard it said that a critic is a man who gets two seats on the aisle, one for himself and one for his opinion of himself. <laughs> Have you seen Huff's original painting, Mrs. Hall? No, no, just a reproduction. But even that captured the character and purpose that the artist gave to his subject. It's really a remarkable study. A sort of composite of all the young men who have ever fought in a war. Hope and disillusion, fear and courage. Young faces with old eyes. Yes, it is a remarkable study. But I, well, I, I wondered... Is there some question in your mind about this portrait, Mr. Crane? Oh, no, no, no. It's just that... Well, uh, of course, you've met Leslie Hoff, haven't you, Doctor? Uh, well, I... Uh, no, Mr. Crane. <laughs> I, I'm afraid that, uh, in spite of my wife's valiant effort to save me from disgrace, I'm going to be forced to admit that I know little about this matter. I've been terribly involved in other affairs. Oh, gosh, that is a surprise, Doc. I can usually count on you. You're my personal newsreel theater. I know, and, and I'm sorry to let you down. Perhaps Mrs. Hall can give you some of the information you need about this young man. No, darling, I can't either. I don't know anything at all about him, only what he's done. Well, then I'd suggest, Mr. Crane, that we delay this interview until tomorrow. Unless today is the deadline for your Sunday feature. Oh, no, sir, that can wait. Uh, we never make up our Sunday paper until Thursday. We serve it hot. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, Vicky, suppose you call this... Uh, Leslie Hoff, and ask him over this afternoon. Then tomorrow, I will be a veritable wellspring of information and will probably gush forth with enough material to last for several Sunday features. Swell. We'll appreciate any information you can give us, Doc. 
All right, and we'll expect to see you tomorrow about the same time, right? Right. Uh, uh, Dr. Hall. Yes? I've been reading a lot lately about the situation in endowed colleges, that uh, rising costs are creating something of a crisis on the educational front, and uh, off the record, uh, well, how does Ivy stand? Got any trouble? Well, like her sister's schools, she's gained a lot of weight around the uh, budget. <laughs> but it's, it's nothing that can't be held in shape by a good, firm foundation. <laughs> uh, preferably a large size endowment with a two way stretch. <laughs> now, I really must say goodbye. Okay, Doc. Be back tomorrow. Goodbye, Mrs. Goodbye. Hall. No, don't bother. I know my way out. <laughs> How do you like that? A large size foundation with a two way stretch. <laughs> well, you really wowed him with your wit, Doctor. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Bob Todd Hunter Hope, the academic joy boy. Yes. Let's get Jivey with Ivy. Yes, <laughs> my dear, but, uh, but neither joyful nor Jivey, I'm afraid. After all, when a young man brings such honor to Ivy, the least I can do is to know about it. Victoria, much as I appreciate your helping me out while Mr. Crane was here, you should have told me before. Mm, I shouldn't even have helped you. No. Well, why not? When you married me, my darling, didn't you promise to love, honor, and get me out of tight situations? <laughs> yes, and you promised to keep me, cherish me, and listen to me, like when I told you all about Leslie Hoff yesterday. Ah, that look of polite attention you were giving me always means you're not hearing a word. You may fool some people, Doctor, but not Tootsie Cromwell. She's quite acute. Now you're supposed to say quite acute what? Oh, indeed. <laughs> Pursued for infringement by Fibber McGee. No, thank you, my dear. <laughs> no, but seriously, don't you think it odd that Crane should have asked me about the state of the college? Especially since it is in such a state. Oh, nonsense. Well, I think Mr. Crane's question was prompted by interest. And I'm not nearly as worried about the state of the college as I am about the state of its president. You need some breakfast. Breakfast? Well, yes, it's something you eat. Oh. A healthy little habit you seem to have gotten out of lately. No, thank you, dear. I'm not hungry. Now, now, Tolly, I'm going to be firm about this. It is now ten o'clock, and I happen to know that you've been up since dawn. In fact, this morning you beat the rooster by a full crow. I did? Well, I'll just have to be more careful. It's the early worm that gets the bird. You know, wait, 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 wait a minute. Where are you going? Well, back to my study to wage bitter battle with the budget. To see if our sinking fund is going down for the third time. Mm, all right, but you're going to have breakfast. I'll bring you some on a tray. No, no, darling, really. I couldn't eat a thing. Buttered toast, dear. That fifth piece was a little dry. Uh, no more, thank you, darling, but I do feel much better. Ah, I can now tackle the famous Hall method for reducing the cost of running a campus with renewed energy and vigor. <laughs> oh, did you call Leslie Hoff? I wasn't able to reach him. I'll keep trying. It, it's strange. I don't believe I've ever heard of him before this award, and he's an extremely talented young man. I know I've never seen him. Oh, Mr. Hoff is an artist. He probably spends his time starving to death in the garret of some first-rate fraternity house. <laughs> he lives at one of the cooperatives, which one I don't know. At any rate, he won't have to starve any longer. That award carried substantial cash value. Which is what all good awards should carry. Cash or some valuable tribute which is readily negotiable at a pawn shop. <laughs> don't move, dear. I get it. Hmm. I've often wondered if the three golden apples over a pawn shop door represented the fruits of improvidence, or did the Medicis, those Florentine loan sharks, believe... It's for you, didn't... Toddy, Mr. Wellman, and he sounds quite happy for a change. Oh, well, I'm sure there's nothing to be alarmed about. He probably just heard that his best friend took a heavy loss on the stock market. <laughs> or that an aging aunt just had her mortgage foreclosed. I should think he... Hello? Dr. Hall speaking. Uh, Dr. Hall, I have news. Well, that's good, I hope. It is good news. Uh, that is excellent news. Have you ever heard of Wilma Marshall? Well, good heavens. Did she win an award, too? Uh, what's that? Did she what? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, go, go ahead, Mr. Wellman. Uh, what about Wilma Marshall? Uh, Mrs. Marshall is calling on you this afternoon. Calling on me? But I don't think I know her. And you must realize that I'm very busy. Uh, not too kinds. busy to see Mrs. Marshall. The reason for her uh, visit to you, Dr. Hall, is to discuss an endowment, a gift, which she proposes to make to Ivy. You don't say so. Is she an alumna? No, she's never attended Ivy. However, she wishes to give us 
$500,000, Dr. Hall. She would... A half million dollars? Yes. And since I won't uh, be able to be there, uh, other matters, I hope you will choose to be uh, reasonable. Well, why should I be unreasonable about half a million dollar gift? <laughs> That's it. Why should you? <laughs> I, I seldom fly into a rage over donations of that magnitude. There is no cause for levity, Doctor. Particularly now, when we all know that Ivy can use it. The, 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 the money, I mean. Now, now, wait, Mr. Wellman. What is wrong... Mrs. With... Marshall will discuss the matter with you. I, uh, uh, the board, only ask that you be, uh, well, uh, far-sighted in the matter. I'm sure you will, if you know what's good for you. Uh, well, well uh, uh, goodbye, Dr. Hall. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Mr. Wellman. Well. What is it, Tony? Or is it anything you can discuss with a wife? This afternoon, we are going to receive a visit from a Mrs. Wilma Marshall. Well, that's nice. Do we know her? No, but as Wellman said, we will. Uh, remember that good, firm foundation I spoke of earlier? <laughs> the large size and diamond with the two-way stretch? Yes, I... Oh, Toddy, you don't mean that Mrs. Marshall is coming here to give us a fitting? Better than that. She's about to girdle us with $500,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ought to help put things in shape. Oh, darling, I'm so glad. What a break for you. I hope so. Only I'm awfully afraid, Vicky, that this girdle is the old-fashioned kind. You know, the kind with strings. When there's beer on your mind... Your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. If you're the sort of person to whom the pleasures of the palate are as much a part of good living as an automobile or a two-week vacation, then more than likely you'll recall your first taste of Schlitz beer. There's something about the taste of this great beer that people never forget. And a reason for it, one of many reasons, is this. Extra mellowing. Yes, for the taste you remember with pleasure, Schlitz beer is mellowed three times. First, Schlitz ages the barley till it's just right for malting. Second, Schlitz ages the malt till it's just right for brewing. Third, Schlitz ages the beer till it's just right for you. This extra mellowing has such wonderful results that more people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. This extra mellowing helps to explain why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. It's mid-afternoon now at Ivy, and we find Dr. Hall and his wife, Victoria, in the living room of their home on Faculty Row, anxiously awaiting the arrival of Mrs. Wilma Marshall, a prospective donor to the college. Where can she be? She's over an hour late. Oh, I'm sure she'll get here, dear. After all, how fast can you walk carrying half a million dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, did I tell you I was finally able to reach Leslie Hoff? He'll be over this afternoon. Fine. And Toddy, guess what? Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute, Vicky. Is a car coming? No, past it. Hmm. Now, what were you saying, dear? Um, oh, I was going to tell you that... Uh, uh, Vicky, Vicky, wait, 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 excuse me, wait. Another car? Yes. No. Yes, it's stopping here. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, how do I look? Like a million dollars. Well, I'll settle for half a million. <laughs> <laughs> you are excited about this, aren't you? Excited? <laughs> of course not. Seeing $500,000 walking up the path doesn't even give me a tremor. Look, see? Steady arms, steady hands. Whoops, steady hall, there she is. <laughs> oh, she does look formidable, doesn't she? Like a Cunard liner. Needing six or eight tugs to nudge her into her slip. <laughs> ah, what an indelicate remark. What? Oh, slip, yes. Well, I, I meant in a nautical sense, of course. Yeah, well, it was, too. Very nautical. <laughs> After this, I wish we'd be a little more... 
Ah, she blows. I'll man the gangway and pipe her aboard. But don't let go the tow rope until she's tied up to the dock. That's precious cargo. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh, oh indeed. I'll be right back. <laughs> Vicky. Uh, I love you. Can't think how life would have been if we hadn't met. Yes, it were all one that I should love a bright particular star and think to wed it. Remember who wrote those lines, my darling? It was a countryman of yours, a man named... Dr. William Hall. No, dear, William Shakespeare. Oh, I beg your pardon. Sir. William, this is Mrs. Marshall. How do you do? I, I, I'm afraid I was daydreaming a little when you... Were... I quite understand, Dr. Hall. Yes, of course. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I, um... I presume Mr. Wellman told you why I'm making this visit? Yes, he did mention the reason. That I suppose you're wondering why I decided to make an endowment to this particular college. <laughs> I rarely question the motives which prompt such generous acts, Mrs. Marshall. My curiosity is usually smothered in gratitude. I have here a small reproduction of a painting. Are you familiar with it, Dr. Hall? Uh, may I see it? I, uh... No, no, I don't believe that I am. William, that's Leslie Hoff's painting, the one that received the award. Of course. Yes, portrait of my body drawn from memory. This doctor is the reason I propose to, to make a gift to Ivy College. But I, I don't quite... Uh, do, do you know the artist, this Leslie Hoff? I haven't the slightest idea who he is. I must confess, Mrs. Marshall, that I, I'm a little confused. If you don't know him... The painting is of a boy I knew well. My son, Jean Marshall. Oh. He was killed in the war. Oh, I'm sorry. It's over now, and I'm not asking for sympathy. The point is that Jean's friend, his, uh, buddy, is a student at Ivy. Because of that, my donation to the school will be made in my son's name. But didn't Jean... Your son have a school of his own where his name might be more appropriately perpetuated? No, he was always tutored. Jean was a shy boy. He was rather afraid of people. He didn't make friends easily. And the acquaintances he did make were hardly fit to... Well, I thought it advisable to keep him at home. I see. Is uh, this portrait of Leslie Hoff's uh, a good likeness of your boy, Mrs. Marshall? No. <laughs> well, it, it's unmistakably his face. But it hides a man. A man I don't know. Can never hope to know. May I see the picture again, Mrs. Marshall? I haven't had a chance to look at it closely. Why, certainly. Here, Doctor. Hmm. Striking portrait, isn't it? Interesting. The lower part of the face is almost obliterated by shadow, all but just a portion of the mouth. And the eyes, the highlighting of the eyes is, is, is quite remarkable. But how well Hoff has brought out the qualities of a young man who, who has suddenly found himself. Hmm. It's a portrait of a boy who has come to the end of a dream and who is shocked at having slept so long. Dr. Hall, I believe that the young man who made this portrait really knew my son, possessed a knowledge about him that his own mother never had. Well, there are few friendships as strong as those founded on great dangers shared. And I imagine you'd like to meet Leslie Hoff. <clears throat> well, I've given that much thought, Mrs. Hall. I believe now that I should like to meet him. Well, splendid, because he's coming here this afternoon. Oh, but... Well, I wish I'd known... I'm afraid it'll be difficult. Oh, probably not as difficult as you think, Mrs. Marshall. Surely there must have been a great bond between Jean and Leslie Hoff. I think it'll give you a good deal of, of satisfaction to meet him. Yes, but let's get to the point of the endowment, Dr. Hall. It's not a thing I care to discuss in front of others. No, of course it isn't. I find that reticence in these matters is not unusual, Mrs. Marshall. I came prepared to write a check for $500,000... In the name of Ivy College. Oh, William, isn't that wonderful? If one condition can be agreed upon, Dr. Hall. And what is that condition? My money must absolutely not be used to provide scholarships for... Well, for certain races and creeds. 
Oh, no. If um, you know what I mean. Oh, yes, yes, Mrs. Marshall. I do know what you mean. And you're making this donation in the name of a son who... who died for the principle of equality? And We don't have to discuss this further, Mrs. Hall. I'm sure that Ivy College can find use for my money in such a way as not to violate the terms of acceptance. Isn't that so, Dr. Hall? Uh, no, Mrs. Marshall, it isn't. I cannot accept it under the conditions you impose. You... I beg your pardon? Even if I were inclined to close my eyes and my ears and my mind to your stipulation, which I am not, the founding fathers of this college would rise in righteous anger. The cornerstone of this institution was laid when this nation was young, when the concept of personal freedom and individual integrity was fiercely defended and willingly died for. It is the principle with which this school was inaugurated. That principle is not for sale, Mrs. Marshall, not even for half a million dollars. Very well, then. That's that. We won't discuss it further. I'll be going, Doctor. Oh, but, but, but surely you'll wait and see, Leslie Hoff. I hope you won't let my refusal interfere with your meeting your son's friend. Yeah, that must be him now. Shall I go, dear? Uh, no, no, I would rather. Mrs. Marshall, will you excuse me? Surely. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doctor. I, I'm Leslie Hoff. Well, come in. Come in. I'm glad to see you. And congratulations on a fine piece of work. Ivy's proud of you, and so am I. Well, thank you, Doctor. Uh, do you have company? Am I interrupting? Oh, no, 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 not at all. In fact, I'm extremely happy you're here. Our guest is someone I know you'll want to meet. Jean Marshall's mother. Jean Marshall? Well, is that someone I'm supposed to know, Doctor? Well, I... I should think so. <laughs> I'm afraid when it comes to names, sir, my memory's not so good. I... I don't think I know who Jean Marshall is. But your painting, that portrait... Oh, the boy. So that's his name. Gene Marshall. Uh, Dr. Hall, I, I never knew. To me, he was the boy. Well, this is, this is a turn of events I didn't quite anticipate. Come with me, Leslie. I want to introduce you to the, um, uh, the boy's mother. Uh, if you don't mind, sir, I, I'd rather not. Well, why not? Well, the boy... Uh, Gene, did you say? Uh-huh. Talked a lot about his mother. I, I think it would only upset her to know that I was her son's friend. No, I don't think it would be wise for me to meet her. Well, of course, that's up to you, Leslie, but um, if you'll trust my judgment, I think it would be the wisest thing you ever did. All right, if you say so, Dr. Hall. Let's go. Good, good. Come on, follow me. Uh, Victoria, this is Leslie Hart. Hello. Uh, my wife, Leslie, and this is Mrs. Marshall, Jean's mother. You? You are Leslie Hoff. When we spoke earlier today on the phone, Leslie, uh, I didn't have a chance to tell you how terribly proud we were to hear of your award and how much we liked the painting. It's superb. Well, I'm pleased that you like it, Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Marshall, I value your opinion, too. Oh, please don't hesitate to be frank. How long did you know my son? Oh, just one night, ma'am. One long, long night. It was during a raid. We were both running for cover. We hit the same foxhole. You... You only knew him one night? There are times during a war, Mrs. Marshall, when one night can be as long as eternity. That's right, Doctor. And this particular night seemed an eternity. You get to know a man pretty well when time crowds you like that. When death is sitting in the game, you, you sort of like to lay all your cards on the table. Mm, I know. I had a friend once who said you talked about everything, anything, to cover up the fact that you were scared. And did you talk together? You and Jean? Yes, we talked. The boy told me about you, Mrs. Marshall. I told him about my mother. He described his ancestors, I described mine. <laughs> he was proud of his great-grandfather who fought in the Civil War. I was proud of mine who was freed by it. 
We even exchanged recipes, believe it or not. Got ourselves so hungry we could hardly stand it. <laughs> it's funny the things we talk about in the foxhole. Your boy grew into a great man that night, Mrs. Marshall. I sat and watched him, his, his face half hidden in shadows. Only the nose and eyes lighted by the enemy flares. And I listened to him tell of the things he planned to do when he got out of the war. They, they were good things. And you never saw him again after that night? No, Mrs. Hall, never again. It's amazing that you could paint a picture of a man you saw only by gunfire. I'll never forget how he looked. Well, the portrait was only an attempt to immortalize a man whose name I never knew, but to whom I owed everything. What do you mean by that? Well, there was an enemy patrol. Well, the noise covered their approach. I, I'll never know exactly what happened. I, I suppose you never do. But the boy was my buddy. I'll spare you the details. But you see, ma'am, he gave his life, saving mine. Hardy, Mrs. Marshall gone? Uh, yes, dear, she just left. Ah, what a lonely woman. I didn't think I could ever feel sorry for her. But I do. Awfully sorry. Don't you? Not anymore, darling. I think she learned a great lesson in understanding today. You do? I wonder. She was... Well, what was that you got in your hand? Uh, this is the proof, Vicky. A check for $500,000 made out to Ivy College. No strings attached. <laughs> I guess she discovered that life itself is a little like a college. You don't learn much by attending only one class. When there's beer on your mind... Your best thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. Before we hear again from Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, ladies and gentlemen, I have an important announcement. Last week, we announced that our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, had wired President Truman that Schlitz would be very happy to ship 600,000 cans of their fine beer to our boys in Korea. We've just been informed by Archibald S. Alexander, Undersecretary of the Army, that this offer has been accepted. That's splendid, Ken. And our best wishes go with it. Yes, indeed, and our hopes for a speedy return. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> We'll be seeing you next week at this same time at the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Colvin. Tonight, the part of Leslie Hoff was played by James Edwards, whose great performance in Stanley Kramer's Home of the Brave won him national acclaim. He's just completed his latest role in the Universal International picture, Lights Out. Mr. Wellman is played by Herbert Butterfield. The other players were Lois Corbett and Jerry Hausner. Tonight's script was written by Cameron Blake and Don Quinn. Our music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking. Now for the adventures of the Great Gildersleeve on NBC.